So the reason we are discussing uh, going into the history of the direct benefit transfer program and its roots in uh, the Andhra Pradesh smart card project is essentially to understand how technology systems have evolved in India. Primarily uh, because if you look at the history of Aadhaar or how technology is being implemented in this country uh, in terms of standards, uh, when you bring in biometrics, when you bring in IDIS, what are the actual origins of this, right? Like we are not essentially sure uh, why these systems are popping up. Uh, but if you, if you trace back uh, into it, a lot of this is emerging actually from existing standards, international standards, existing pilot projects that were potentially implemented across the country. Uh, in particular, the usage of biometrics in banking actually emerges from the Andhra Pradesh Bank Card project, uh, which kind of came in because back in 2006, uh, when early UPA one, you had the NRGA system just rolling out, people uh, just figuring out how to start giving work to livelihood to these people and start actually paying them subsidies. And you actually see a bunch of these uh, things create problems for the government in terms of uh, wage distribution, in terms of uh, duplicate people. I mean, sure, there were issues in terms of multiple people who were trying to benefit. Uh, there could be uh, political scams, which are probably created by the local leaders. But essentially, it created a bunch of issues in terms of uh, distribution of subsidies. And the issue in, in terms of distribution of subsidies was kind of always there, especially in the public distribution systems where people were trying to draw out extra rations. And states like Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka have been trying to deduplicate them or fi find duplicates who are, who are misusing these systems for a while. So Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka, I guess, were one of the key early states which were doing this because both the states were trying to use e-governance or uh, IT in governance and both of them were equally trying to do things. Uh, but it was mostly Andhra Pradesh which was, which in this particular case has been documented. So what AP does in 2006 is they should uh, pilot project order to essentially start transferring uh, NRGA and uh, social security pension wages electronically. Uh, at that point of time, I believe uh, the government employees were already receiving their salaries uh, using electronic transfers because uh, the electronic payments were already in place, except it wasn't easy to do electronic payments for uh, people in villages because they, they really didn't have bank accounts and forget accessing electronic bank accounts. So, and, and this was a time when there was a lot of effort to create financial inclusion, to get people into formal banking system through financial inclusion programs, uh, something which NABAD was essentially trying to do. And there was this financial inclusion technology fund under which is what uh, this entire project of pilot was tested. Uh, the pilot notification actually has a detailed list of things that they wanted to do because it's a pilot, it hasn't been implemented. They outlined the plan and the list of agencies and entities which would be coordinating with the pilot. Uh, the requirements definitely included identification of beneficiaries because that was one key requirement in distributing uh, subsidies. And to develop this, they actually worked with the Institute for Development and Research Banking Technology, uh, which was the sort of tech body for banking agencies, which was trying to experiment with, with banking technology systems. So at some level, this the idea to start using electronic banking or a, a kind of a direct benefit transfer originates with the AP Smart Card projects. Uh, the reason biometrics were involved is essentially because of the standard, uh, the smart card standard called SOCSTA, S-E-O-S-T-A. 
smart card operating system for transport application. Soxta as a standard kind of emerged because the Ministry of Road Transport and Highways wanted this ID card, which they essentially wanted to use to start giving travel driver's licenses. Uh, and this was a point of time they were also having issues with people using or creating fake driver's licenses. So they needed some kind of verifiability of what is an original license and what would be a fake license. So the best thing was to start using a chip, uh, uh, biometric based, chip based uh, ID card. And Soxta was developed by NIC, IIT Kanpur, and I think uh, CDAC was also involved. And it kind of emerged around 2002, 2003. This is the point of time when uh, India was also debating to getting a national ID card. So uh, the multipurpose national ID card subcommittee at the Ministry of Home Affairs also recommended that they start using Soxta as a standard for the national identity card scheme. So the idea of biometrics in banking or whether in ID cards kind of emerges from the standards because this was the standard ISO 7816 or the ISO 1443, uh, the contactless cards were the existing standards at that point of time to actually be used for uh, ID cards in general. So this actually became the basis for every ID card, whether it's subsidy, whether it's driver's license, whether it's identity cards in general. There were uh, plans to get this for e-transport, sorry, e-passport, and uh, even bank card. Uh, if you actually go look at the socksta.gov.in website, you'll find a lot of documentation, including source codes and uh, technical documentation of how uh, they were basically essentially storing JSON values of any identity information that you wanted to show, whether it was for driver's license or MNIC or PDS. So Soxta kind of became the base standard which promoted biometrics at some level. Uh, coming back to the Andhra Pradesh project. So I'm actually using slides from 2007, eight, even though the project notification kind of came out in 2006, uh, it was, it took them a, a while to coordinate with various agencies, including the RPI uh, and banks, to essentially uh, implement them in two districts of Varangal and Karimnagar of first world Andhra Pradesh, uh, Telangana now. So they decided to implement or the, use, use these smart card systems in two schemes, the social pension schemes and the NRGA scheme. And Basically, to actually get this rolling, the RPI actually appointed a couple of committees which were looking at it into usage of information technology for financial inclusion systems, uh, which would, the RPI was very closely monitoring because it's a pilot project on electronic payments. And what essentially it led to, I mean, if you ask what did this pilot show us, uh, they had issues in terms of people not turning up. Uh, so there were around 474 people who never really turned up to claim NRGS payments or pensions. And there were also people who were enrolled, but they did not turn up. So all of them were term brokers. So that some time, at some level, this is the origin of the savings that claims that they always use that using biometrics uh, or using electronic benefit transfer could bring down the cost of implementation and also save money. It kind of emerged from this pilot. Uh, at least this is the first known documented case of it. So the RPI committees on financial inclusion are interesting because as, if, if you look at uh, standardization of technology as a process. If it started uh, with Soxta for the identification cards, uh, in terms of using biometrics for financial technology or using it uh, inside payment industry kind of emerged with RB RBS Committee on Financial Inclusion, which heavily looked into it, this biometric data inter interchange formats, uh, the ISO 1974, 19, 1994 and 2005, 
because at that point of time, this was the standard that one, again, everyone was using. They were looking at global standards. So you find the EQL and ISO standards and you're just trying to adopt them. Uh, this is where you try to standardize how the biometrics will be collected and uh, what kind of biometrics will be collected. The idea of face image data and iris data essentially also emerges from the RBA Committee on Financial Inclusion. Uh, and most of this was standardized by this committee. Uh, even though when we go back to SOCSTA, uh, the SOCSTA standard is again, uh, an equivalent ISO standard, which NIC kind of just adopted, but it was actually tailor-made, like you had to write the code for it to share it with different ministries. In case of the RBA Committee on Financial Inclusion, so it, they just uh, they just issued a standard. It, it was in the RBA, which was essentially deploying it. Uh, in, in fact, it was the private companies which were uh, implementing these systems. So you had uh, companies like Fino, which were essentially collecting biometrics, issuing these smart cards, and at the same time ha having uh, the POS machines where one could verify the person who's collect com coming to collect the wages or uh, who's essentially there to collect the electronic transfer of money is not actually a duplicate person. Uh, this idea of using Fino or banking correspondence as they call it, the model emerged much before uh, this pilot project because it was, it was something that the RBA was trying to promote for financial inclusion projects in general. So when AP starts to look at this project, they actually adopted whatever was the best practices and they said we will adopt the business correspondent project, sorry, business correspondence model. The biometric standards in banking, while they were framed by the individual committees, what essentially happened is it was this RBA committee on electronic benefit transfer, which actually studied the entire Andhra Pradesh smart card project to finally arrive on how to actually do electronic benefit transfers. Uh, I think this was in 2008, while you had the biometric standardization for financial inclusion projects by RBI in 2007. Uh, AP announces its project in 2006, but the entire pilot project to be implemented in those six models in two districts, it took them a while. So it was kind of evaluated by the National Institute of Smart Governance, uh, which actually produced a report on it. Uh, this was kind of an issue in the first and second meetings of the committee, which was looking into the electronic benefit transfer program, uh, the issue in front of the committee were basically two. Uh, one was a business process issue on how the bank should be distributing this, uh, whether it should be a, a bank branch model, whether it's a, a bank and business correspondence model. So they were evaluating not just the technology systems, but essentially the role of banks and the role of other institutions in this entire process. And this committee on electronic benefit transfer is actually what recommended the smart card biometric identification system that Andhra Pradesh has implemented. And this is where the idea of deduplication kind of emerges. Uh, because as I was showing you again, Andhra Pradesh, when it actually implemented its pilot, it had issues of people not turning up or to claim essentially same people with potentially different ID cards, uh, essentially different, when I say different ID cards, you could be the same person, but you're trying to claim, uh, enroll into service programs using say a pan, using a ration card or using a water ID. So there are various IDs that were eligible for you to enroll into any of the savings schemes. So they needed a single ID to be used everywhere. Without a single ID, there was a potential for duplication of systems where an individual could actually be enrolled twice. Uh, 
And to evade that, the idea of deduplication check time and merges. Uh, if you are asking how were they planning to do deduplication check, they actually realized this was a very computing intensive task and they didn't really want to have a centralized database, right? Like if you look at the whole idea of the SOXA standard card, it actually stores the biometrics on the chip on the card, right? Like the biometrics are not centralized. Uh, so, so the committee actually says we should be deduplicating people at a district level, but it's often in other case studies, in other implementations, it's been found that uh, there could be people who are potentially claiming subsidy in two different districts, and a district level deduplication check was kind of not really a viable solution. But this is what the committee offered at that point of time due to the technology limitations that were available. Like you couldn't really do an entire national level deduplication check, but the idea of deduplication primarily emerges from this committee. And it's kind of interesting that this committee evaluated only the Andhra Pradesh project, even though there have there are reports of similar projects that were being carried out in other uh, states as well. Like you had Karnataka, which is also trying to use biometrics, uh, trying to do deduplication, de but it was doing for ration delivery, at, I guess, uh, because RBI was trying to limit itself to the concept of payments and not necessarily looking into the whole idea of subsidy delivery in all other schemes, uh, they kind of limited their scope to just the electronic benefit transfer, where they're looking at how could we start uh, distributing wages for NRGA and pension, where it's actually money and it's not like uh, a grain that's being given out in case of PDS. The evaluation of smart card project happened happened because uh, National Institute of Smart Governance uh, actually recommended that the system be evaluated to the committee. I mean, the first meeting of the committee itself, uh, Andhra Pradesh government actually recommends the whole public-private partnership. I mean, you're technically using the public-private partnerships when you're using business correspondence. Uh, pre that, like, before you want to introduce electronic benefit transfer schemes, most of the wage distributions was actually happening to India Post. So it was it was mostly being done by the government because uh, banks were technically not available. Bank like physical bank branches were not available in remote parts of the country where NRGA work was actually happening. So it was near impossible for a private uh, banking company or even for a government banking uh, institution to start distributing these wages at these remote villages. So, uh, so, the, so to distribute the NRGA based payments, India Post was the essential point of contact. Uh, but Andhra Pradesh actually starts recommending using private sector because they had issues uh, using India Post, right? Like, they, it was a huge challenge to distribute money uh, to potentially pros of people who were actually part of the scheme. And all of this happened in one of the first meetings of the committee. It's there in the committee's report, uh, if you look on the RPS website. Uh, the first meeting also essentially said, and as at that point of time, when the committee was initially meeting, wasn't really sure if this system was working. So they actually recommended a technical and business evaluation of the system. This is when you have uh, the RBI and NRC together evaluating the system. So there are multiple reports like the, the RBI one. So the NISG report is also really interesting because at that point of time, uh, uh, they actually okay the entire technology system because biometrics and smart cards are where they were fairly adopting ISO standards. There isn't uh, 
there is there isn't anything new that they could be suggesting but nic was primarily looking at the business practices and processes more rather than the technology issues if you actually look at the report there were like kind of questions looking into uh, how the data storage is going to happen what will be the security arrangements that were that will be possible i'm sorry i think i ended uh, the screen sharing sorry um just going to the report of the financial report sorry yeah so if you look at the nisc report it was fairly interesting that they were looking at all crypto related uh, issues uh what kind of public infrastructure security will be looking at uh, whether it's uh how will the crypto will be put on mobile right like you're using an nisc secure chip it was 72k java crypto four processor smart card i mean this was high way back in 2007 so these were the security measures that they were looking at but they were also had like questions on uh to mostly fino which was looking at uh implementing the systems their essential questions were like what are the cost impacts of using contactless card versus contact cards uh the technical evaluation as i was saying is like they really looked into all of this uh what would be the security issues what would be the cost memory cost uh what what would be essentially how yeah i mean they were even looking at the legality of these issues uh the it act does not mandate uh, pka to be used in smart card solution so you were essentially evaluating every individual component of the system like the idea of deduplication Uh, identify definite requirements of the duplication process along with the cost involved was also evaluated like it wasn't it wasn't easy to start doing the duplication processes for a lot of people right like you're talking about uh, millions of people in the country even at that point of time in 2006 uh but but nsc actually okayed the entire system uh and has actually okay the entire system by just suggesting few basic changes to business processes uh to coming back to this question why are we looking at these things what is the actual need of even evaluating these systems right like uh, when when we create this is kind of the prehistory of other um, the other project kind of takes over from here and when we criticize other uh, for its various failures uh, it's it's not necessarily that the failures were first experienced during the other project uh, even if you actually look back go back and look at some of the documents from the smart card project they actually had issues of people who were physically challenged to couldn't really access their subsidies so the idea of introduce a concept right like uh, somebody else will share their biometrics and collect your subsidy your wages was essentially already introduced in andhra pradesh way before this was again implemented in andhra and a lot of this kind of evaluation that we have seen that has happened with the ap smart card project uh kind of really didn't happen with other or even if it did happen uh, there were reports by uadi itself which were trying to recommend things which were trying to recommend biometrics iris uh but most of those origins kind of go back to these committees and reports uh and i frankly don't know uh, whether at this uh, during 2008 2006 8 whether there were any public uh, engagement on these issues like when you actually started looking at uh, uid i definitely they were not so open at the early stages but eventually they start holding public consultations right so the evaluation of these standards and creation of standards and technology systems kind of makes up an important 
part for any technology system to scale up and this has been happening uh, and the ap smart card project is essentially the root for all of this uh, but i think one thing if i have to say now maybe uh, nobody everyone has probably overlooked at it in 2008 is what happened with errors like that right? people who put physically challenged people you 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 really can't evaluate these things in a small pilot and this is the kind of thing that they also encountered with implementing the aadhaar program and they eventually started like a retrofitting things uh, but this idea of identification and biometrics not necessarily originates from aadhaar it, it's always been part of our financial inclusion programs and our uh public distribution systems because they were always broken from the start i will open it up for questions and and the idea in trying to bring up this history is essentially to even look at how do we start evaluating current upcoming standards or upcoming systems uh, which are ongoing i think i'm just allowing everyone to talk if any of you wants to ask any questions you can just unmute yourself if anyone has a question okay either i can explain it it's kind of just historic i guess okay so uh while this was one side of things we are going to look at actually look at raw data of the direct benefit transfer scheme uh like next the saturday uh, part of this cashless consumer meet up uh so i've been like filing a, a lot of rtis trying to actually get uh, data on transactions and transaction failures both with other and without other uh, across across the country both for uh, states and center for all the schemes with the dbt mission and they kind of supply data for the past two years from 2017 Three years ago, I have data until June 2020. It's it's actually on uh, Karna's GitHub account. If you just go to GitHub.com/slash/Karna, uh, you can find the DBT data, which is already up there. Uh, we will be looking at the technical design uh, of DBT and why failure kind of happens uh, in in uh, DBT delivery with. Uh, currently and what are the actual numbers of it like i know all of us kind of debated this at lens during the other uh, uh, judgment or that the other challenge in the supreme court but uh, there has been no actual evidence based analysis of these systems uh, even if you look at uh, the errors that happen at uidi uh they are completely different from the errors that could happen at npci uh, because of the number of institutions that are involved with, uh, in in this process okay so ambika has a question could you tell us a bit more about how they dealt with the errors in ap pilot you mentioned this i think might have missed this was the duplication a success in that context uh okay so i i don't I think there was deduplication in AP. Uh, deduplication was recommended by the RBI committee after uh, after looking at the AP project. Uh, but what happened at the AP project was identification 
of beneficiaries with some level of consistency or I, I won't call it that but at least that's what they call it right like so you're trying to uh, identify people accurately uniquely this whole idea of uniquely identifying people uh, actually emerges in, with technology emerges from here uh, it's not like people haven't tried identifying beneficiaries with ration cards or elsewhere I mean, if you really want to understand the uh, historic context of ID documents, I'd uh, recommend you actually read uh, Tarangini Sri Raman's book on uh, identity documents in India. But in terms of usage of information technology in ID cards, kind of goes back to Sockstar and uh, uh, it, it kind of comes back to the AP Smart Card project when you're looking at uh, uh, DBT. I mean, uh, if you actually want to look at issues uh, in terms of ID related issues, I think uh, the Sockstar website has a fair amount of details. Uh, but so the question on terms of errors, right? Like uh, there were a few issues. I think this was looked into heavily in the NISG evaluation. Um, Will smart cards create any errors at all? Right? Like, uh, technically, it's a card. Uh, you, you're using a POS device to verify the biometrics. Uh, now, the issue could be uh, that the biometric fingerprints may not match. Uh, we have no data on this at that point of time. But there are documentary evidence of them facing issues. I can share more, document, uh, more documents. I mean, if you actually want to look at some of the, the documents on the AP Smart Card project, uh, a lot of them are on archive.org uh, on, on the Wayback Machine, actually. Uh, you just have to go and uh, type in, I haven't shared any links here, but uh, all you have to do is uh, type in the rural development the department of AP's web link. It's actually uh, rd.ap.gov.in on Wayback Machine and go back in something like 2008, uh, 9, you will find a lot of these reports. Uh, even the NISC evaluation report is kind of not available anywhere. Uh, I mean, most of these things are not in current public websites. Uh, I'll be mostly up uploading them uh, and I can email you. I'm trying to gather as much information as possible as well. But there was definitely that question during the pilot whether errors can happen with biometrics and they felt it was minimal. Definitely they didn't like look at uh, the kind of research that went into other post patient of UIDI uh, definitely did not happen for this pilot project. So it, it's also in some ways you could say that some of these reports and standards that are made uh, don't, re don't really look at the complete profile of these systems but are just recommending these systems based on small pilots. Uh, and it's often the case in all technology systems. Okay. Anyone else is interested to know a bit more about the technicalities of these systems? I think a fair bit of things that went wrong with other already went wrong with this project, except they never really ended up in these official reports because uh, when the RBA was looking at the evaluation of this project, I don't think they carried out their own independent evaluation. They actually asked NISG to do work for them. Uh, so you have, you always have consultants and these organizations which may not be really putting in all the uh, issues that an individual might face and 
when you're talking about bringing technology into public systems, often the public part is removed. Like your consultations with public and feedback from the public uh, kind of never really happens at the way it should happen. Uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Unless anyone else has more questions, I'm happy to also take some feedback. What you want to hear about the current DBT scheme for the upcoming session on Saturday? Uh, Uh, Srinivas, hi, this is Harsha here. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, 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 like working in Telangana, for example, uh, we have the uh, famous Raitabandhu scheme where, you know, uh, probably the government uh, 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 says it can actually uh, credit accounts in like two, three days uh, to all farmers uh, who are eligible. And... Uh, 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 understanding how the government works and also trying to uh, discuss with a few uh, collectors and administrators. Uh, this time there is a lot of push for aadharification totally, right? Wherever there were gaps, a uh, few thousands in each district, they were also pushed and made sure all were aadharified, their accounts and uh, the uh, amounts were pushed in. So one is an issue with aadhar in itself. Uh, and then we have uh, the whole cash benefit, uh, uh, the DVTs which are done. Uh, so, uh, what are we actually finding, uh, no, uh, what is the way, uh, you know, as a civil society forward is also, uh, I was trying to think through and uh, are we looking at uh, uh, any other better models in this aspect, uh, different countries uh, also uh, in the similar aspect, for example, uh, just to also, I think so Sunil uh, from uh, uh, Sunil Abraham was about, at one point of time saying, instead of Aadhaar, we can have a card, uh, uh, which is, you know, uh, uh, or, uh, so uh, so are we looking, what are the alternatives uh, we are looking at uh, when we say about DBTs and things is also something I was, uh, you know, trying to, uh, yeah. And just okay. loud thinking. So, yeah, so, I mean, the idea of using cards instead of biometrics was always pushed, right? Like, uh, Sunil at CIS and the Internet and Society was always talking about using um, Sockstar. In fact, when he termed smart card, he was actually referring to the Sockstar smart card standards uh, because at that point of time, they were already standards and they were like, why are you, why is the UIDI uh, collecting biometrics at that scale? Uh, or for the whole database and their, in terms of security issues, in terms of other challenges, they were always recommending that let's start issuing cards instead of biometrics. Uh, but a lot of this has nothing to do with uh, uh, electronic payment transfers. A lot of this is about just the identification layer. Uh, in fact, when you look at wage payments, salary payments that happened in Andhra Pradesh itself, uh, they were not about IDs uh, of the government employees. They're mostly based on the bank account numbers. Uh, so all you have to do is just transfer, use something like any FT to start transferring money directly into accounts. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, usage of NEFT for NRGS was always done. Uh, even now, uh, there is a significant portion of uh, DBT money which actually gets transferred uh, via non other based electronic transfer methods like NEFT. Uh, so, other kind of became mandatory because it was pushed for this whole deduplication exercise, they're saying that there are frauds and all of the uh, people are skimming money and all of it. But but I think the at the end of the day, the ulterior motive of the 
private sector was trying to basically push put themselves to gain money that 2% tax that they get uh, interest that they get uh, for every transactions but frankly i think uh, at this stage i would even say smart card is also a waste uh, if you're talking about actually doing electronic bank transfers you just need a bank account uh, you don't need the id cards uh, are that kind of complicated all of this because of the whole biometric authentication verification and failures at uh, at that stage uh, I mean, if you go look at UIDA's website, UIDA itself says uh, they have 99 types of errors in which uh, the whole other authentication can fail. From internet not working to biometrics not being recognized, there are like a whole around 100 error codes. Now, when you start linking that to POS, uh, POS device, which is your Android or any tablet with biometric sensor, it kind of increases further. When you when you actually go into uh, start using uh, banking on top of other number, it in fact it goes far further. We can't compute them because you you idea never releases this data. But I'm going to be looking at me and Shrikan Lakshman will be looking at some of this uh, with actual figures on data and how much is uh, how much. How, how much errors are happening? Did they go down in the past three years? Did they go up uh, both at the center and state level? Uh, in fact, the data is already up online. As I was saying, you could just go search for uh, uh, github.com slash Karana and you'll find dbt data on there. It's just Excel files. Have a look at it. Uh, the issue still exists. Their data itself shows us that. Uh, they're trying to work on it. But again, data always doesn't capture everyone's issues. And if you're talking about alternatives at this stage, I don't think I don't think they're going to even listen to it. But thankfully, because of COVID, uh, everyone's shutting down usage of biometrics for delivery of subsidies, especially for PDS. So I think they're just giving. People are just hungry and they're giving, distributing some of the uh, subsidies by identifying them in other ways.